Cardiff, is the capital and largest city of Wales. It forms a principal area, officially known as the city and county of Cardiff, and the city is the 11th largest in the United Kingdom. Located in the southeast of Wales and in the Cardiff capital region, Cardiff is the county town of the historic county of Glamorgan and in 1974-1996 of South Glamorgan. It belongs to the Eurocities network of the largest European cities. A small town until the early 19th century, its prominence as a port for coal when mining began in the region helped its expansion. In 1905 it was ranked as a city and in 1955 proclaimed capital of Wales. Cardiff built-up area covers a larger area outside the county boundary, including the towns of Dinas Powys and Penarth. Cardiff is the main commercial centre of Wales as well as the base for the Senate. At the 2011 census, the Unitary Authority area population was put at 346,090, and the wider urban area at 479,000. In 2011 it ranked 6th in the world in a National Geographic magazine list of alternative tourist destinations. It is the most popular destination in Wales with 21.3 million visitors in 2017. Cardiff Bay contains the Senate Building and the Wales Millennium Centre Arts Complex. Work continues at Cardiff Bay and in the centre, on projects such as Cardiff International Sports Village, BBC Drama Village, and a new business district. Card derives from the Middle Welsh Cardiff. The change from Dyfe to Deeth shows the colloquial alteration of Welsh F, V, and DD, F, and was perhaps also driven by folk etymology. This sound change had probably first occurred in the Middle Ages, both forms were current in the Tudor period. Cardiff has its origins in post-Roman Brythonic words meaning the fort of the Taff. The fort probably refers to that established by the Romans. Caer is Welsh for fort and Dyfe is in effect a form of Taff, the river which flows by Cardiff Castle, with the T showing consonant mutation to D and the vowel showing affection as a result of a genitive case ending. The anglicized Cardiff is derived from Cardiff, with the Welsh F, V, borrowed as FF slash F slash, as also happens in Taff and Land Daff. The antiquarian William Camden suggested that the name Cardiff may derive from Caer Didi, a name supposedly given in honor of Aulus Didius Gallus, governor of a nearby province at the time when the Roman fort was established. Although some sources repeat this theory, it has been rejected on linguistic grounds by modern scholars such as Professor Gwynedd Pierce. Archaeological evidence from sites in and around Cardiff, the St. Lithan's Burial Chamber near Wenvo, the Tinkins Wood Burial Chamber, near Street. Nicholas, the Cararfau Chambered Tomb, Cree Jiao, about 6 miles or 10 kilometers northwest of Cardiff City Centre, and the Gwarni Klepa Long Barrow, near Coed Kernu, Newport. All show that people had settled in the area by at least around 6000 BC, during the early Neolithic, about 1,500 years before either Stonehenge or the Great Pyramid of Giza was completed. A group of five Bronze Age tumuli is at the summit of the Garth, within the county's northern boundary. Four Iron Age hill fort and enclosure sites have been identified within Cardiff's present-day county boundaries, including Carrow Hillfort, an enclosed area of five. One hectares. Front wall of Cardiff Castle part of the original Roman fort until the Roman conquest of Britain, Cardiff was part of the territory of the Ciliaries. A Celtic British tribe that flourished in the Iron Age, whose territory included the areas that would become known as Breckenshire, Monmouthshire and Glamorgan. The three. Two hectare fort established by the Romans near the mouth of the River Taff in AD 75, in what would become the northwestern boundary of the centre of Cardiff, was built over an extensive settlement that had been established by the Romans in the 50s AD. The fort was one of a series of military outposts associated with Isca Augusta that acted as border defences. The fort may have been abandoned in the early 2nd century as the area had been subdued. However, by this time a civilian settlement, Orvicus, was established. It was likely made up of traders who made a living from the fort, ex-soldiers and their families. A Roman villa has been discovered at Ely. Contemporary with the Saxon shore forts of the 3rd and 4th centuries, a stone fortress was established at Cardiff. Similar to the shore forts, the fortress was built to protect Britannia from raiders. Coins from the reign of Gratian indicate that Cardiff was inhabited until at least the 4th century, the fort was abandoned towards the end of the 4th century, as the last Roman legions left the province of Britannia with Magnus Maximus. Little is known of the fort and civilian settlement in the period between the Roman departure from Britain and the Norman conquest. The settlement probably shrank in size and may even have been abandoned. 
In the absence of Roman rule, Wales was divided into small kingdoms. Early on, Merigap Tudrig emerged as the local king in Glywising. The area passed through his family until the advent of the Normans in the 11th century. The Norman keep in 1081 William I, King of England, began work on the castle keep within the walls of the old Roman fort. Cardiff Castle has been at the heart of the city ever since. The castle was substantially altered and extended during the Victorian period by John Crichton Stewart, 3rd Marquess of Butte, and the architect William Burgs. Original Roman work can, however, still be distinguished in the wall facings. A town grew up under the castle, consisting mainly of settlers from England. Cardiff had a population of between 1,500 and 2,000 in the Middle Ages, a normal size for a Welsh town in the period. It was the centre of the Norman Marcher Lordship of Glamorgan. By the end of the 13th century, Cardiff was the only town in Wales with a population exceeding 2,000, although it remained relatively small compared with notable towns in England and continued to be contained within its walls which were begun as a wooden palisade in the early 12th century. It was of sufficient size and importance to receive a series of charters, notably in 1331 from William Lazouche, Lord of Glamorgan through marriage with the de Clare family. Edward III in 1359, then Henry IV in 1400, and later Henry VI. In 1404, Owen Glindor burned Cardiff and took possession of the castle. As many of the buildings were made of timber and tightly packed within the town walls, much of Cardiff was destroyed. His statue was erected in Cardiff Town Hall in the early 20th century, reflecting the complex, often conflicting cultural identity of Cardiff as capital of Wales. It was soon rebuilt on the same street plan and began to flourish again. Besides serving an important political role in the governance of the fertile South Glamorgan coastal plain, Cardiff was a busy port in the Middle Ages and declared a staple port in 1327. View of Cardiff Castle Cardiff Old Town Hall in 1536, the laws in Wales Acts 1535-1542 led to the creation of Glamorganshire and Cardiff was made the county town. It also became part of Kibber 100, around the same time the Herberts became the most powerful family in the area. In 1538, Henry VIII closed Cardiff's Dominican and Franciscan friaries, whose remains were used as building materials. A writer in this period noted, the river Taff runs under the walls of his honours castle and from the north part of the town to the south part where there is a fair. Keen a safe harbour for shipping. Cardiff became a free borough in 1542 and further royal charters were granted to it by Elizabeth I in 1600 and James I in 1608. In 1573, it was made a head port for collection of customs duties. Pembrokeshire historian George Owen described Cardiff in 1602 as the fairest town in Wales yet not the wealthiest. It gained a second royal charter in 1608. John Speed's map of Cardiff from 1610 A disastrous flood in the Bristol Channel on January 30, 1607 changed the course of the River Taff and ruined St. Mary's Parish Church, which was replaced by a chapel of ease dedicated to St. John the Baptist. During the Second English Civil War St. Fagans, just to the west of the town, the Battle of St. Fagans, between Royalist rebels and a new model army detachment, was a decisive victory for the parliamentarians that allowed Oliver Cromwell to conquer Wales. It was the last major battle in Wales, with about 200, mostly Royalist soldiers killed. Cardiff was at peace throughout the ensuing century. In 1766, John Stuart, first Marquess of Butte married into the Herbert family and was later created Baron Cardiff. In 1778, he began renovating Cardiff Castle. A racecourse, printing press, bank and coffee house opened in the 1790s and Cardiff gained a stagecoach service to London. Despite these improvements, Cardiff's position in the Welsh urban hierarchy declined over the 18th century. Iolo Morganud called it an obscure and inconsiderable place and the 1801 census found a population of only 1,870, making it only the 25th largest town in Wales, well behind Merthyr and Swansea. In 1793, John Crichton Stewart, 2nd Marquess of Butte was born. He spent his life building the Cardiff docks and was later hailed as the creator of modern Cardiff. A twice-weekly boat service between Cardiff and Bristol opened in 1815, and in 1821, the Cardiff Gas Works was established. After the Napoleonic Wars Cardiff suffered some social and industrial unrest, starting with the trial and hanging of Dick Pendarin in 1831. Jubilee Dock, Cardiff, from the eastern side the town grew rapidly from the 1830s onwards, when the Marquess of Butte built a dock, which eventually linked to the Taft Vale Railway. Cardiff became the main port for coal exports from the Cunan, 
Rhonda and Rummy Valleys, and grew in population at a rate of nearly 80% per decade between 1840 and 1870. Much of this was due to migration from within and outside Wales. In 1841, a quarter of Cardiff's population were English born and more than 10% born in Ireland. By the 1881 census, Cardiff had overtaken Merthyr and Swansea to become the largest town in Wales. Cardiff's status as the premier town in South Wales was confirmed when it was chosen as the site for the University College of South Wales and Monmouthshire in 1883. A permanent military presence was established with the completion of Mandy Barracks in 1877. Cardiff faced a challenge in the 1880s when David Davis of Schlondinam and the Barry Railway Company promoted rival docks at Barry. These had the advantage of being accessible in all tides, David Davis claimed his venture would cause grass to grow in the streets of Cardiff. From 1901 coal exports from Barry surpassed those from Cardiff, but the administration of the coal trade remained centered on Cardiff, in particular its coal exchange. Where the price of coal on the British market was determined and the first million pound deal was struck in 1907. The city also strengthened its industrial base when the owners of the Dolice Iron Works in Merthyr built a steelworks close to the docks at East Moors, which Lord Butte opened on February 4, 1891. Cardiff became a county borough on April 1, 1889 under the Local Government Act 1888. The town had grown rapidly and had a population of over 123,000. It retained its county borough status until 1974. National Museum of Wales, Cardiff King Edward VII granted Cardiff City status on October 28, 1905. It acquired a Roman Catholic cathedral in 1916. Later, more national institutions came to the city, including the National Museum of Wales, the Welsh National War Memorial, and the University of Wales Registry Building. But it was denied the National Library of Wales, partly because the library's founder, Sir John Williams, considered Cardiff to have a non-Welsh population. After a brief post-war boom, Cardiff docks entered a prolonged decline in the interwar period. By 1936, trade was at less than half its value in 1913, reflecting the slump in demand for Welsh coal. Bomb damage in the Cardiff Blitz of World War II included the devastation of Lendaff Cathedral, and in the immediate post-war years, the city's link with the Butte family came to an end. The city was recognised as the capital city of Wales on December 20, 1955, in a written reply by the Home Secretary, William Lloyd George. Carnarvon had also vied for the title. Welsh local authorities had been divided, only 76 out of 161 chose Cardiff in a 1924 poll organised by the South Wales Daily News. The subject was not debated again until 1950, and meanwhile Cardiff took steps to promote its Welshness. The stalemate between Cardiff and cities such as Carnarvon and Aberystwyth was not broken until Cardiganshire County Council decided to support Cardiff, and in a new local authority vote, 134 out of 161 voted for Cardiff. Cardiff therefore celebrated two important anniversaries in 2005. The Encyclopedia of Wales notes that the decision to recognise the city as the capital of Wales had more to do with the fact that it contained marginal conservative constituencies than any reasoned view of what functions a Welsh capital should have. Although the city hosted the Commonwealth Games in 1958, Cardiff only became a centre of national administration with the establishment of the Welsh office in 1964, which later prompted the creation of various other public bodies such as the Arts Council of Wales and the Welsh Development Agency, most of which were based in Cardiff. Redevelopment in the city's historic Cardiff Bay area The East Moor Steelworks closed in 1978 and Cardiff lost population in the 1980s, consistent with a wider pattern of counter-urbanisation in Britain. However, it recovered to become one of the few cities outside London where population grew in the 1990s. During this period the Cardiff Bay Development Corporation was promoting the redevelopment of South Cardiff, an evaluation of the regeneration of Cardiff Bay published in. 2004 concluded that the project had reinforced the competitive position of Cardiff and contributed to a massive improvement in the quality of the built environment. Although it had failed to attract the major inward investors originally anticipated. In the 1997 Welsh devolution referendum, Cardiff voters rejected the establishment of the National Assembly for Wales by 55. 4% to 44. 2% on a 47% turnout which Dennis Balsam partly ascribed to a general preference in Cardiff and some other parts of Wales for a British rather than exclusively Welsh identity. The relative lack of local support for the Assembly and difficulties between the Welsh Office and Cardiff Council in acquiring the originally preferred venue, Cardiff City Hall, 
encouraged other local authorities to bid to house the assembly. However, the assembly was eventually located at Tai Huel in Cardiff Bay in 1999. In 2005, a new debating chamber on an adjacent site, designed by Richard Rogers, was opened. Offices of the Welsh and UK governments in Cardiff the HQ of the Welsh Government and the Crown Buildings, Cathays Park, Cardiff the HQ of the UK Government Secretary of State for Wales in William Morgan House the Senate has been based in Cardiff Bay since its formation in 1999 as the National Assembly for Wales. The Senate building was opened on March 1, 2006 by the Queen. The members of the Senate, the Senate Commission and Ministerial Support Staff are based in Cardiff Bay. Cardiff elects four constituency members of the Senate to the Senate. The constituencies for the Senate are the same as for the UK Parliament. All of the city's electors have an extra vote for the South Wales Central Regional members. This system increases proportionality to the Senate. The most recent Senate general election was held on May 6, 2021. In the Senate, Cardiff is represented by Jenny Rathbone in Cardiff Central, Julie Morgan in Cardiff North, Vaughan Gething in Cardiff South and Penarth and First Minister of Wales Mark Drakford in Cardiff West. At Westminster, Cardiff is represented by four Labour MPs, Joe Stevens in Cardiff Central, Anna McMoran in Cardiff North, Stephen Dowdy in Cardiff South and Penarth, and Kevin Brennan in Cardiff West. The Welsh Government is headquartered in Cardiff's Cathays Park, where most of its civil servants are based, with smaller numbers in other central locations, Cathays, Canton, and Cardiff Bay. There are other Welsh government offices in other parts of Wales, such as Landidno and Aberystwyth, and there are international offices. Cardiff Council Building City Hall County Hall, the head office between 1889 and 1974 Cardiff was a county borough governed by Cardiff County Borough Council. Between 1974 and 1996, Cardiff was governed by Cardiff City Council, a district council of South Glamorgan. Since local government reorganisation in 1996, Cardiff has been governed by the City and County Council of Cardiff, based at County Hall in Atlantic Wharf, Cardiff Bay. Voters elect 75 councillors every four years. Between the 2004 and 2012 local elections, no individual political party held a majority on Cardiff County Council. The Liberal Democrats held the largest number of seats and councillor Rodney Berman was leader of the council. The Liberal Democrats and Plaid Cymru formed a partnership administration. In the 2012 elections the Labour Party achieved an outright majority, after gaining an additional 33 seats across the city. Cardiff is divided into communities, several with their own community council and the rest governed directly by Cardiff City Council. Elections are held every five years. The last contested elections would have been held at the same time as the 2017 Cardiff Council election had there been more candidates standing than available seats. Those with community councils are the centre of Cardiff is relatively flat and bounded by hills to the east, north and west. Its location influenced its development as the world's largest coal port, notably its proximity and easy access to the coal fields of the South Wales Valleys. The highest point in the local authority area is Garth Hill, 307 metres above sea level. Cardiff is built on reclaimed marshland on a bed of Triassic stones. This reclaimed marshland stretches from Chepstow to the Ely Estuary, which is the natural boundary of Cardiff and the Vale of Glamorgan. Triassic landscapes of this part of the world are usually shallow and low-lying, consistent with the flatness of the centre of Cardiff. The classic Triassic marl, sand and conglomerate rocks are used predominantly throughout Cardiff as building materials. Many of these Triassic rocks are purplish, especially the coastal marl found near Penarth. One of the Triassic rocks used in Cardiff is Radder Stone, a freestone which as its name suggests is quarried in the Radder district. Cardiff has also imported some materials for buildings, Devonian sandstones from the Brecon Beacons has been used. Most famously, the buildings of Cathays Park, the civic centre in the centre of the city, are built of Portland stone from Dorset. A widely used building stone in Cardiff is the yellow-grey Liassic limestone rock of the Vale of Glamorgan, including the rare Sutton stone, a conglomerate of Leas limestone and Carboniferous limestone. Cardiff is bordered to the west by the rural district of the Vale of Glamorgan, also known as the Garden of Cardiff, to the east by the city of Newport, to the north by the South Wales Valleys, and to the south by the Severn Estuary and Bristol Channel. The River Taff winds through the city centre and together with the River Ely flows into the freshwater Cardiff Bay. A third river, the Rummy, flows through the east of the city directly into the Severn Estuary. Cardiff lies near the Glamorgan Heritage Coast, stretching westward from Penarth and Barry, commuter towns of Cardiff, with striped yellow-blue Jurassic limestone cliffs. 
The Glamorgan coast is the only part of the Celtic Sea with exposed Jurassic geology. This stretch of coast with its reefs, sandbanks and serrated cliffs was a ship graveyard, many ships sailing to Cardiff during the industrial era were wrecked on this hostile coastline during west-slash-southwesterly gales. Smuggling, deliberate shipwrecking and attacks on ships were also common. Overlooking Cardiff Bay, viewed from Penarth Cathay's library the dock feeder canal Atlantic Wharf inner Cardiff consists of the wards of Plasnui, Gab Alpha. Roth, Cathays, Adams Down and Splot Ward on the north and east of the city centre, and Butte Town, Grange Town, Riverside and Canton to the south and west. The inner city areas to the south of the A4161 Road, known as the Southern Arc, are with the exception of Cardiff Bay some of the poorest districts of Wales, with low levels of economic activity. On the other hand, Gab Alpha, Plasnuit and Cathays north of the Arc have large student populations, and Poncana is a favourite for students and young professionals. Peen Island, to the northeast of Roth Park, is an affluent area popular with older parents and the retired. To the west lie Ely and Carrow, which have some of the largest housing estates in the United Kingdom. With the exception of some outlying privately built estates at McHaleston Super Ely, this is an economically disadvantaged area with high numbers of unemployed households. Culver House Cross is a more affluent western area of the city. Fairwater, Heath, Birchgrove, Gab Alpha, Minichty, Landaff North, Landaff, Lanishan, Radir, Whitchurch, and Tunwinlay, Rubina, Thornhill, Leesvane and Syncode lie in an arc from the northwest to the northeast of the center. Leesvane, Syncode, Radir and Rubina contain some of the most expensive housing in Wales. Further east lie the wards of Pont Prena and Old St. Melons, Rumney, Pentwin, Len Rumney, Lenethdairn, and Pentrobridge. The last four are largely public housing stock although much new private housing is being built in Trowbridge. Pont Prenau is the newest suburb of Cardiff, while Old St. Melons has a history going back to the 11th century Norman conquest. The region that may be called rural Cardiff contains the villages of St. Fagans, Creajau, Pantyrch, Tungwinlay and Gwalod Y. Garth. In 2017, plans were approved for a new suburb of 7,000 homes between Radir and St. Fagans, known as Plaster. St. Fagans, home to the Museum of Welsh Life, is protected from further development. Since 2000, there has been a marked change of scale and building height in Cardiff, with the development of the city centre's first purpose-built high-rise apartments. Tall buildings have been built in the city centre in Cardiff Bay, and more are planned. Cardiff, in the north temperate zone, has a maritime climate marked by mild weather that is often cloudy, wet and windy. Summers tend to be warm and sunny, with average maxima between 19 and 22 degrees Celsius. Winters are fairly wet, but rainfall rarely excessive and frost rare. Spring and autumn feel similar and the temperatures tend to stay above 14 degrees Celsius, also the average annual daytime temperature. Rain is unpredictable at any time of year, although showers tend to be shorter in summer. The northern part of the county, being higher and inland, tends to be cooler and wetter than the city center. Cardiff's maximum and minimum monthly temperatures average 21. 5 degrees Celsius and 2. 1 degree Celsius. For Wales, the temperatures average 19. 1 degree Celsius and 1. 1 degree Celsius. Cardiff has 1,518 hours of sunshine in an average year. Cardiff is sunniest in July, with an average 203. 4 hours during the month, and least sunny in December with 44. 6 hours. Cardiff experiences less rainfall than average for Wales. It falls on 146 days in an average year, with total annual rainfall of 1,151. 9 mm. Monthly rainfall patterns show that from October to January, average monthly rainfall in Cardiff exceeds 100 mm each month, the wettest month being December with 125. 3 mm and the driest from April to June, with average monthly rainfall fairly consistent between 65 and 75 mm. After a period of decline in the 1970s and 1980s, Cardiff's population is growing again. It reached 346,100 in the 2011 census, compared to a 2001 census figure of 305,353. Between mid-2007 and mid-2008, Cardiff was the fastest-growing local authority in Wales, with growth of 1.2%. According to 2001 census data, Cardiff was the 21st largest urban area. The Cardiff Larger Urban Zone has 841. 600 people, the 10th largest lose in the UK. 
The Cardiff and South Wales Valley's metropolitan area has a population of nearly 1. 1 million. Residential areas of northern Cardiff official census estimates of the city's total population have been disputed. The City Council published two articles arguing that the 2001 census seriously underreported the population of Cardiff, and in particular the ethnic minority population of some inner city areas. The Welsh Government's official mid year estimate of the population of the Cardiff Local Authority area in 2019 was 366,903. At the 2011 census, the official population of the Cardiff built up area was put at 447,287. The Bois is not contiguous with the local authority boundary and aggregates data at a lower level. For Cardiff, this includes the urban part of Cardiff, Penarth slash Danas Powys, Caerphilly, and Potterpreeth. Cardiff has an ethnically diverse population due to past trading connections, post war immigration, and large numbers of foreign students who attend university in the city. The ethnic makeup of Cardiff's population at the 2011 census was 84. 7% white, 1. 6% mixed white and black African slash Caribbean, 0. 7% mixed white and Asian, 0. 6% mixed other, 8. 1% Asian, 2. 4% black, 1. 4% Arab and 0. 6% other ethnic groups. This means almost 53,000 people from a non-white ethnic group reside in the city. This diversity, especially that of the city's long-established African and Arab communities, has been celebrated in cultural exhibitions and events, along with a number of books published on this subject. University Hospital of Wales There are seven NHS hospitals in the city, the largest being the University Hospital of Wales, which is the third largest hospital in the UK and deals with most accidents and emergencies. The University Dental Hospital, which provides emergency treatment, is also located on this site. Landuff Hospital is located in the south of the city. Street. David's Hospital, the city's newest hospital, built behind the former building, is located in Canton and provides services for the elderly and children. Cardiff Royal Infirmary is on Newport Road, near the city centre. The majority of this hospital was closed in 1999, but the West Wing remained open for clinic services, genitourinary medicine and rehabilitation treatment. Rookwood Hospital and the Villandre Cancer Centre are also located within Cardiff. They are administered by the Cardiff and Vale University Health Board, with the exception of Villandre, which is run by a separate trust. Spire Healthcare, a private hospital, is in Pont Prena. Bilingual signs are commonplace in Cardiff. Cardiff has a checkered linguistic history with Welsh, English, Latin, Norse and Norman French preponderant at different times. Welsh was the majority language in Cardiff from the 13th century until the city's explosive growth in the Victorian era. As late as 1850, five of the twelve Anglican churches within the current city boundaries conducted their services exclusively in Welsh, while only two worshipped exclusively in English. By 1891, the percentage of Welsh speakers had fallen to 27. 9% and only Leesvane, Lenefdairn and Creajau remained as majority Welsh-speaking communities. The Welsh language became grouped around a small cluster of chapels and churches, the most notable of which is Tabernacle in the city centre, one of four UK churches chosen to hold official services to commemorate the new millennium. The city's first Welsh language school was established in the 1950s. Welsh has since regained ground. Aided by Welsh medium education and migration from other parts of Wales, there are now many more Welsh speakers, their numbers doubled between the 1991 and 2011 censuses, from 18,071 to 36,735 residents aged three years and above. Though so with the highest percentage of Welsh speakers in the city centre is found in Canton, at 25.5%. Though so with the highest percentage of Welsh speakers in the whole of Cardiff is Whitchurch, at 26%. Cardiff City Council adopted a five-year Welsh language strategy in 2017, aimed at increasing the number of Welsh speakers in Cardiff by 15.9%, from 36,735 in 2011 to 42,584 residents by the 2021 census. The ONS estimated that in December 2020, 89,900 of Cardiff's population could speak Welsh. In addition to English and Welsh, the diversity of Cardiff's population means that many other languages are spoken. One study has found that Cardiff has speakers of at least 94 languages, with Somali, Urdu, Bengali and Arabic being the most commonly spoken foreign ones. The modern Cardiff accent is distinct from that of nearby South Wales valleys. 
It is marked primarily by, language schools due to its diversity and large student population, more people now come to the city to learn English. Foreign students from Arab states and other European countries are a common sight on the streets of Cardiff. The British Council has an office in the city centre and there are six accredited schools in the area. Cardiff's cathedrals Landaff Cathedral, an Anglican cathedral, the parish church of Landaff, the seat of the Bishop of Landaff, the head of the church in Wales Cardiff Metropolitan Cathedral, a Catholic cathedral, the seat of the Archbishop of Cardiff. Since 1922, Cardiff has included Landaff within its boundary, along with the Anglican Landaff Cathedral, the parish church of Landaff and the seat of the Bishop of Landaff, head of the church in Wales and the Diocese of Landaff. There is a Roman Catholic cathedral in the city. Since 1916, Cardiff has been the seat of a Catholic archbishop, but there appears to have been a fall in the estimated Catholic population, with numbers in 2006 around 25,000 fewer than in 1980. Likewise, the Jewish population appears to have fallen, there are two synagogues in Cardiff, one in Syncode and one in Moira Terrace, as opposed to seven at the turn of the 20th century. There are several nonconformist chapels, an early 20th century Greek Orthodox church and 11 mosques. In the 2001 census, 66. 9% of Cardiff's population described itself as Christian, a percentage point below the Welsh and UK averages. The oldest of the non-Christian communities in Wales is Judaism. Jews were not permitted to live in England and Wales between the 1290 Edict of Expulsion in the 17th century. A Welsh Jewish community was re-established in the 18th century. There was once a fairly substantial Jewish population in South Wales, most of which has disappeared. The Orthodox Jewish community congregations are consolidated in the Cardiff United Synagogue in Syncode, which was dedicated by Chief Rabbi Jonathan Sachs in 2003. The Cardiff Reform Synagogue is in Adamstown. Shah Jalal Mosque on Cruise Road, Cardiff. Built in 1899 as a Welsh Calvinistic Methodist chapel, a mosque since 1990. Sri Swaminarayan Mundir in Riverside is the first and largest Hindu temple in Wales. Sri Dasme Singh Sabha Gurdwara, Batra Sikh Centre, Riverside Cardiff's Muslim population is much above the Welsh average and the longest established in the UK, being started by Yemeni and Somali sailors settling in the 19th century. Cardiff now has over 11,000 Muslims with various national affiliations, nearly 52% of the Muslim population in Wales. The proportion of Cardiff residents declaring themselves Hindu, Sikh and Jewish were all considerably higher than the Welsh averages, but lower than the UK figures. The city has had a Hindu community since Indian immigrants settled in the 1950s and 1960s. The first Hindu temple in the city was opened in Grangetown on April 6, 1979 on the site of an abandoned synagogue. The 25th anniversary of the founding was celebrated in September 2007 with a parade of over 3,000 people through the city centre, including Hindus from across the United Kingdom and members of Cardiff's other religious communities. There are over 2,000 Hindus in Cardiff, worshipping at three temples. In the 2001 census 18. 8% of the city's population stated they had no religion, while 8. 6% did not state a religion. The Coal Exchange is the capital city of Wales, Cardiff is the main engine of growth in the Welsh economy. Though the population of Cardiff is about 10% of the Welsh population, the economy of Cardiff makes up nearly 20% of Welsh GDP and 40% of the city's workforce are daily and commuters from the surrounding South Wales area. Industry has played a major part in Cardiff's development for many centuries. The main catalyst for its transformation from a small town into a big city was the demand for coal required in making iron and later steel, brought to sea by Packhorse from Merthyr Tydfil. This was first achieved by building a 25-mile canal from Merthyr to the Taff Estuary at Cardiff. Eventually the Taff Vale Railway replaced the canal barges and massive marshalling yards sprang up as new docks were developed in Cardiff, all prompted by the soaring worldwide demand for coal from the South Wales valleys. At its peak, Cardiff's port area, known as Tiger Bay, became the busiest port in the world and, for some time, the world's most important coal port. In the years leading up to the First World War, more than 10 million tons of coal was exported annually from Cardiff docks. In 1907, Cardiff's Coal Exchange was the first host to a business deal for a million pounds sterling. After a period of decline, Cardiff's port has started to grow again, over 3 million tons of cargo passed through the docks in 2007. The 26-story Bridge Street Exchange at 85 metres in height, is the tallest building in Cardiff. 
Cardiff today is the main finance and business services centre in Wales, with strong representation of finance and business services in the local economy. This sector, combined with the public administration, education and health sectors, have accounted for about 75% of Cardiff's economic growth since 1991. The city was recently placed 7th overall in the top 50 European cities in the FTI 2008 Cities of the Future list published by the FTI magazine, and ranked 7th in terms of attracting foreign investment. Notable companies such as Legal and General, Admiral Insurance, Bose, Zurich, ING Direct, the AA, Principality Building Society, 118,118, British Gas, Brains, Swalik Energy and VT. All operate large national or regional headquarters and contact centers in the city, some of them based in Cardiff's office towers such as Capital Tower and Brunel House. Other major employers include NHS Wales and the Senate. On March 1, 2004, Cardiff was granted fair trade city status. Cardiff is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the United Kingdom, receiving 18. 3 million visitors in 2010 and generating £852 million for the city's economy. One result is that one in five employees in Cardiff is based in the distribution, hotels and restaurants sector, highlighting the growing retail and tourism industries in the city. The city has many hotels of varying sizes and standards, providing almost 9,000 available beds. The BBC Cymru Wales Estate in Cardiff BBC New Broadcasting House BBC Roth Lock Studios Cardiff is home to the Welsh media and a large media sector with BBC Cymru Wales, S4C and ITV Wales all having studios in the city. There is a large independent TV production industry sector of over 600 companies, employing around 6,000, with a turnover estimated at £350 million. Just to the northwest of the city, in Ron the Cut on Taff, the first completely new film studios in the UK for 30 years are being built, to be named Valleywood. The studios are set to be the biggest in the UK. In 2011 the BBC completed the Roth Lock Studios in Cardiff Beta film dramas such as Casualty, Doctor Who, and Pio Bala Coombe. Cardiff has several regeneration projects, such as St. David's Two Centre and surrounding areas of the city centre, and the One Pound. Four billion international sports village in Cardiff Bay, which played a part in the London 2012 Olympics. It features the only Olympic standard swimming pool in Wales, the Cardiff International Pool, which opened on January 12, 2008. According to the Welsh Rugby Union, the Principality Stadium contributed £1 billion to the Welsh economy in the 10 years after it opened in 1999, with around 85% of it staying in the Cardiff area. Street. David's in the Hayes is the largest shopping centre in Wales. Most of Cardiff's shopping portfolio is in the city centre around Queen Street, St Mary Street, and High Street, with large suburban retail parks in Cardiff Bay. Culver House Cross, Leckwith, Newport Road, and Pont Prenat, together with markets in the city centre and Splot. A £675 million regeneration programme for Cardiff Street. David's centre was completed in 2009, providing a total of 1,400,000 square feet of shopping space, making it one of the largest shopping centres in the United Kingdom. The centre was named the International Shopping Centre of the Year in 2010 by Retail Leisure International. Queen Street, one of Cardiff's main shopping areas the Castle Quarter is a commercial area in the north of the city centre, which includes some of Cardiff's Victorian and Edwardian arcades, Castle Arcade, Morgan Arcade and Royal Arcade, and Principal Shopping Streets, St Mary Street, High Street, The Hayes, and Queen Street. Cardiff Central Railway Station Cardiff Queen Street Railway Station Cardiff Central Railway Station is the largest railway station in Wales, with nine platforms coping with over 12. 5 million passengers a year. It provides direct services to Bergend and Newport, long distance, cross Wales services to Wrexham and Hollihead, and services to Bristol, Birmingham, Manchester, and London. Cardiff Queen Street Railway Station is the second busiest in Wales and the hub for the Valley Line services that connect the South Wales Valleys and the Cardiff suburbs with the city centre on the former site of Temperance Town. It is located at the eastern end of the city centre and also provides services to Cardiff Bay. Cardiff has a suburban rail system known as the Valleys and Cardiff Local Routes, operated by Transport for Wales. There are eight lines that serve 20 stations in the city, 26 in the wider urban area and more than 60 in the South Wales Valleys and the Vale of Glamorgan. Cardiff Airport domestic and international air links to Cardiff and South and West Wales are provided from Cardiff Airport, the only international airport in Wales. 
The airport lies in the village of Rus, 10 miles west of the city. There are regular bus services linking the airport with Cardiff Central Bus Station, and a train service from Rus Cardiff International Airport Railway Station to Cardiff Central. Cardiff Bus has the most bus services operating in the Cardiff area. The M4 motorway connects Cardiff with Swansea to the west and Newport and London to the east, with four junctions on the M4, including one with the A48. The A470 provides an important link from the city to the heads of the Valleys Road. When completed, the A4232, also known as the Peripheral Distributor Road, will form part of the Cardiff Ring Road system, along with the M4 motorway between junctions 30 and 33. Cardiff has a comprehensive bus network, whose providers include the municipal bus company Cardiff Bus. Nat Group, Stagecoach South Wales and First Cymru. National Express and Megabus provides direct services to major cities such as Bristol, London, Newcastle-upon-Tyne and Manchester typical cycle lane in Cardiff. The Taft Trail is a walking and cycle path running for 55 miles between Cardiff Bay and Brecon in the Brecon Beacons National Park. It runs through Butte Park, Sophia Gardens and many other green areas within Cardiff. It is possible to cycle the entire distance of the trail almost completely off-road, as it largely follows the River Taff and many of the disused railways of the Glamorganshire Valleys. Nextbike have operated a public bike hire scheme in the city since March 2018. Aquabus The Aquabus water taxi runs every hour between the city centre and Cardiff Bay, and between Cardiff Bay and Penarth Cardiff Bay Barrage. Throughout the year, Cardiff water bus sail between the pierhead on the waterfront and the Penarth end of the Cardiff Bay Barrage with short sightseeing cruises. Between March and October boats depart from Cardiff Bay for Flatholm Island. The P.S. Waverley and M.V. Balmoral sail from Britannia Quay to various destinations in the Bristol Channel. 029 is the current telephone dialing code for Cardiff, as well as for the neighbouring towns of Penarth, Danas Powys, and Cairfilly. The dialing code is optional when dialing within the area, one can dial between any two phones within the 09 code using only the 8-digit local number. Prior to the big number change on April 22, 2000 the area had shorter, six-digit local numbers with an area code of 01222. This was 0222 before May 1995, derived from 0, 22 and 2. Before the introduction of automated trunk call dialing, non-local numbers were accessed through a system of manual telephone exchanges, in common with rest of the United Kingdom. There remains a common misconception that local numbers are still six digits long and that the code is 02920, even though there are newer Cardiff numbers in the ranges 21XX4X and 22XX4X. Cardiff University's main building Cardiff is home to four major institutions of higher education, Cardiff University, Cardiff Metropolitan University, University of South Wales and the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama. Cardiff University was founded by a royal charter in 1883 as the University College of South Wales and Monmouthshire, is a member of the Russell Group of leading research-led universities, having most of its campus in Cathays and the city centre. Cardiff Metropolitan University has campuses in the Landaff, Syncode and city centre areas, and is part of the Confederal University of Wales. The Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama is a conservatoire established in 1949 and is based in the grounds of Cardiff Castle. The University of South Wales's Cardiff campus, Atrium, is home to the Cardiff School of Creative and Cultural Industries and is located in the city centre. Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama The total number of higher education students in the city is around 43,900. The city also has two further education colleges, Cardiff and Vale College and St David's College. The former is the result of a merger, completed in August 2011, between Colleg Glanhaffern and Barry College. Further education is also offered at most high schools in the city. Cardiff has three state nursery schools, 98 state primary schools, and 19 state secondary schools. There are also several independent schools in the city, including St. John's College, Landaff Cathedral School, Cardiff Sixth Form College, King's Moncton School and Howell School, a single-sex girls school. In 2013 Cardiff Sixth Form College came top of the independent senior schools in the UK, which were based on the percentage of A and A at advanced level. Also in the top 100 were St. John's College and Howell School. Notable schools include Whitchurch High School, Fitzallen High School, and Uskal Jifun Jimre Glantaf. As well as academic institutions, Cardiff is also home to other educational and learning organisations such as Techniques, a hands-on science discovery centre that now has franchises throughout Wales. 
and is part of the Wales Gene Park in collaboration with Cardiff University, NHS Wales and the Welsh Development Agency. Cardiff is also home of the largest regional office of the International Baccalaureate Organisation. This office is home to the organisation's Curriculum and Assessment Centre, which is responsible for overseeing the creation and grading of various IBDP assessments. Pierhead Building Cardiff has many landmark buildings such as the Principality Stadium, Pierhead Building the Welsh National Museum and the Senate Building, the home of the Welsh Parliament. Cardiff is also famous for Cardiff Castle, St. David's Hall, Landaff Cathedral and the Wales Millennium Centre. Cardiff Castle is a major tourist attraction in the city and is situated in the heart of the city centre. The National History Museum at St. Fagans in Cardiff is a large open-air museum housing dozens of buildings from throughout Welsh history that have been moved to the site in Cardiff. The Civic Centre in Cathays Park comprises a collection of Edwardian buildings such as the City Hall, National Museum and Gallery of Wales, Cardiff Crown Court and buildings forming part of Cardiff University, together with more modern civic buildings. These buildings are laid out around the Queen Alexandra Gardens, a formal park which contains the Welsh National War Memorial and a number of other, smaller memorials. In addition to Cardiff Castle, Castell Coke is located in Tungwinlay, in the north of the city. The current castle is an elaborately decorated Victorian folly designed by William Burgs for the Marquis and built in the 1870s, as an occasional retreat. However, the Victorian castle stands on the footings of a much older medieval castle possibly built by Iforbach, a regional baron with links to Cardiff Castle also. The exterior has become a popular location for film and television productions. It rarely fulfilled its intended role as a retreat for the beauties, who seldom stayed there. For the Marquis, the pleasure had been in its creation, a pleasure lost following Berg's death in 1881. Cardiff claims the largest concentration of castles of any city in the world. As well as Cardiff Castle and Castelcoke, there are the remains of two Mott and Bailey castles in Morganstown and Rubina, known as Morganstown Castle Mound and Tompath Castle or Tompath Mott respectively. Tompath being a Welsh word for a small mound, which along with a castle at Whitchurch formed an arc of fortifications which divided the Norman lordship from the Welsh lordship of Senganeth. Further up the Sphincibra Ridge on the boundary with Caerphilly there is also another ruined castle, known as Morgrade Castle. Archaeological evidence suggests this castle was never finished, and it is debated whether the fortification was of Norman or Welsh origin. The concentration of castles indicates the movable nature of the border between the Norman lordship of Glamorgan, centred at Cardiff, and its Welsh neighbours to the north. There is also the ruined Landaff Bishop's Palace, also known as Landaff Castle, which was the home of the medieval bishops, which was destroyed about 1403-1404 by the Welsh leader Owen Glyndor. Now only the ruined gatehouse remains. Not strictly a castle in the historical sense, St. Fagan's Castle is a preserved 17th-century manor house, once the seat of the Earls of Plymouth. Other major tourist attractions are the Cardiff Bay Regeneration Sites, which include the recently opened Wales Millennium Centre and the Senate Building, and many other cultural and sites of interest, including the Cardiff Bay Barrage and the famous Coal Exchange. The new theatre was founded in 1906 and refurbished in the 1980s. Until the opening of the Wales Millennium Centre in 2004, it was the premier venue in Wales for touring theatre and dance companies. Other venues popular for concerts and sporting events include Motorpoint Arena, St David's Hall and the Principality Stadium. Cardiff Story, a museum documenting the city's history, has been open to the public since the spring of 2011. Cardiff has over 1,000 listed buildings, ranging from the more prominent buildings such as the castles, to smaller buildings, houses and structures. Cathedral Road was developed by the third Marquess of Butte and is lined by fine villas, some backing onto Sophia Gardens. Cardiff has walks of special interest for tourists and ramblers alike, such as the Centenary Walk, which runs for two plus one quarter miles within Cardiff city centre. This route passes through many of Cardiff's landmarks and historic buildings. The Animal Wall, designed by William Burgs in 1866, marks the south edge of Butte Park on Castle Street. It bears 15 carved animal statues. Wales Millennium Centre Cardiff has many cultural sites varying from the historical Cardiff Castle and out-of-town Castell Coke to the more modern Wales Millennium Centre in Cardiff Bay. Cardiff was a finalist in the European Capital of Culture 2008. In recent years Cardiff has grown in stature as a tourist destination, with recent accolades including Cardiff being voted the 8th favourite UK city by readers of The Guardian. The city was also listed as one of the top 10 destinations in the UK on the official British Tourist Board's website Visit Britain, 
and U.S. travel guide Frommers have listed Cardiff as one of 13 top destinations worldwide for 2008. Annual events in Cardiff that have become regular appearances in Cardiff's calendar include Sparks in the Park, the Great British Cheese Festival, Cardiff Mardi Gras, Cardiff Winter Wonderland, Cardiff Festival and Maiden Roth. Motor Point Arena Cardiff A large number of concerts are held in the city, the larger ones at St. David's Hall, the Motor Point Arena and occasionally the Principality Stadium. A number of festivals are also held in Cardiff, the largest being the Cardiff Big Weekend Festival, held annually in the city centre in the summer and playing host to free musical performances, from artists such as Ash. Jimmy Cliff, Karis Matthews, The Fun-Loving Criminals, Soul to Soul and the Magic Numbers, Fairground Rides and Cultural Events such as a Children's Festival that takes place in the grounds of Cardiff Castle. The annual festival claims to be the UK's largest free outdoor festival, attracting over 250,000 visitors in 2007. Cardiff hosted the National Eisteddfod in 1883, 1899, 1938, 1960, 1978, 2008 and 2018. Cardiff is unique in Wales in having two permanent stone circles used by the Gorst of Bards during Eisteddfodo. The original circle stands in Gorst Gardens in front of the National Museum while its 1978 replacement is situated in Butte Park. Since 1983, Cardiff has hosted the BBC Cardiff Singer of the World Competition, a world-renowned event on the opera calendar which is held every two years. The city also hosts smaller events. A number of performing arts venues are located within the city. The largest and most prominent of these is the Wales Millennium Centre, which hosts performances of opera, ballet, dance, comedy and musicals, and is home to the BBC National Orchestra of Wales. St. David's Hall has regular performances of classical music and ballet as well as music of other genres. The largest of Cardiff's theatres is the New Theatre, situated in the city centre just off Queen Street. Other such venues include the Sherman Theatre, Chapter Arts Centre and the Gate Arts Centre. The Cardiff music scene is established and wide-ranging, home to the BBC National Orchestra of Wales and the Welsh National Opera, has produced several leading acts, has acted as a springboard for Welsh bands to become famous. Acts hailing from Cardiff include Charlotte Church, Shirley Bassey, Ewan Rian, The Oppressed, Kids in Glass Houses, Los Campesinos, The Hot Puppies, The School, We're No Heroes, Budgie and Shaken Stevens. Also, performers such as The Automatic, Manic Street Preachers, Lost Prophets, Super Furry Animals, Catatonia and Bullet for My Valentine have links with the city and are associated with the Cardiff music scene. In 2010, Cardiff was named the UK's second most musical city by PRS for Music. Cardiff has held a photo marathon in the city each year since 2004, in which photographers compete to take the best 12 pictures of 12 previously unknown topics in 12 hours. An exhibition of winners and other entries is held in June-July each year. Sporting venues include the Principality Stadium, the National Stadium and home of the Wales National Rugby Union Team, Sophia Gardens for Glamorgan County Cricket Club, Cardiff City Stadium for Cardiff City FC and the Wales Football Team. Cardiff International Sports Stadium, home of Cardiff Amateur Athletic Club, Cardiff Arms Park for Cardiff Blues and Cardiff RFC Rugby Union Teams, and Ice Arena Wales for Cardiff Devils Ice Hockey Team. It hosted the 1958 British Empire and Commonwealth Games and was dubbed European City of Sport for its role in international sporting events in 2009 and again in 2014. The Principality Stadium hosted 11 football matches during the 2012 Summer Olympics, including the opening event and the men's bronze medal match. Butte Park Cardiff has strong nightlife. Most clubs and bars are situated in the city centre, especially St. Mary Street. More recently Cardiff Bay has built up a strong night scene, with many modern bars and restaurants. The Brewery Quarter on St. Mary Street is a recently developed venue for bars and restaurant with a central courtyard. Charles Street is also a popular part of the city. The Lake at Roth Park, including the lighthouse erected as a memorial to Captain Scott Cardiff is known for its extensive parks and other green spaces covering around 10% of the city's total area. Cardiff's Main Park, Butte Park extends northwards from the top of one of Cardiff's main shopping street. When combined with the adjacent land Daff fields and Pont Canna fields to the northwest it produces a massive open space skirting the River Taff. Other popular parks include Roth Park in the north, donated to the city by the 3rd Marquess of Butte in 1887, which includes a popular boating lake, Victoria Park. Cardiff's first official park, and Thompson's Park, formerly home to an aviary removed in the 1970s. 
Wild open spaces include Howardy and Local Nature Reserve, 32 acres of the Lower Rumney Valley in Pean Island noted for its orchids, and Forest Farm Country Park, over 150 acres along the River Taff in Whitchurch. Cardiff is one of the top 10 retail destinations in the UK with Queen Street and Street. Mary Street is the two main shopping streets with the three shopping arcades, Street. David Centre, Queen's Arcade and the Capital Centre. The current expansion of Street. David Centre as part of the St. David's 2 project has made it one of the largest shopping centres in the UK. As well as the modern shopping arcades. The city is home to Victorian shopping centres, such as High Street Arcade, Castle Arcade, Wyndham Arcade, Royal Arcade, and Morgan Arcade. Also of note is the Hayes, home to Spiller's Records, the world's oldest record shop. Cardiff has a number of markets, including the vast Victorian indoor Cardiff Central Market and the newly established Riverside Community Market, which specializes in locally produced organic produce. Several out-of-town retail parks exist, such as Newport Road, Culver House Cross, Cardiff Gate, and Cardiff Bay. The South Wales Echo and Western Mail Cardiff is the Welsh base for the main national broadcasters. A locally based television station, Made in Cardiff, is also based in the city centre. Major filming studios in Cardiff include the BBC's Roth Lock Studios and Pinewood Studios Wales. Several contemporary television programmes and films are filmed in and or set in Cardiff such as Casualty, Doctor Who, Merlin, The Sarah Jane Adventures, Torchwood, The Valleys, Upstairs Downstairs, and Sherlock. The main local newspaper is the South Wales Echo, the national paper is the Western Mail. Both are based in Park Street in the city centre. Capital Times, Echo Extra and the South Wales edition of Metro are also based and distributed in the city. There are several magazines, including Primary Times and a monthly Papurbro, and a Welsh-language community newsletter called Why Dines It. Radio stations serving the city and based in Cardiff include Capital FM, Heart, BBC Radio Wales, BBC Radio Cymru, Nation Radio, Radio Cardiff, Smooth Radio and Express Radio. The Principality Stadium was one of the first six British landmarks to be fully mapped on Google Street View as a 360-degree virtual tour. Cardiff Arms Park Cardiff hosts many high-profile sporting events at local, national and international level and in recognition of the city's commitment to sport for all was awarded the title of European Capital of Sport 2014. Organized sports have been held in the city since the early 19th century. National home sporting fixtures are nearly always played in the city. All Wales multi-sports agencies and many of the country's sports governing bodies have their headquarters in Cardiff and the city's many top quality venues have attracted world-famous sports events, sometimes unrelated to Cardiff or to Wales. In 2008-09, 61% of Cardiff residents regularly participated in sport and active recreation, the highest percentage in LL22 local authorities in Wales. Rugby union fans around the world have long been familiar with the old National Stadium, Cardiff Arms Park, and its successor the Principality Stadium, which hosted the FA Cup for six years it took to rebuild Wembley Stadium. In 2009, Cardiff hosted the first Ashes cricket test between England and Australia to be held in Wales. Cardiff hosted eight football matches of the London 2012 Olympics. Principality Stadium Cardiff City FC played their home games at Ninian Park from 1910 until the end of the 2008-09 season. The club's new home is the Cardiff City Stadium which they initially rented to the Cardiff Blues, the city's professional rugby union team, the Blues returning to the Arms Park in 2012. Cardiff City have played in the English Football League since the 1920-21 season, climbing to Division 1 after one season. Cardiff City are the only non-English team to have won the FA Cup, beating Arsenal in the 1927 final at Wembley Stadium. They were runners-up to Portsmouth in the 2008 final, losing 1-0 at the new Wembley Stadium. In the 2013-14 and 2018-19 seasons Cardiff City played in the English Premier League. Cardiff Metropolitan University FC of the Athletic Union of Cardiff Metropolitan University, based in Syncode, play in the Cymru Premier, having been promoted from Welsh League Division 1 in 2016. They were winners of the Welsh League Cup for the 2018-19 season. Cardiff has numerous smaller clubs including Bergen Street AFC, Carrow AFC, Cardiff Corinthians FC, Cardiff Grange Harlequins AFC, and Ely Rangers AFC, which all play in the Welsh Football League system. Sport Wales National Centre, Cardiff, Headquarters of Sport Wales, the Welsh Sports Association and the Federation of Disability Sport. 
Wales in addition to men's football teams Cardiff City ladies of the FA Women's Premier League Southern Division are based in the city. Teams in the Welsh Premier Women's Football League are Cardiff Met. Ladies, Syncode Ladies, and Cardiff City. During the 1990s, London-based football club Wimbledon FC expressed interest in relocating to Cardiff, having been without a home of their own since exiting Plough Lane Stadium in 1991 and sharing with Crystal Palace FC at Selhurst Park. The relocation of the club to Cardiff did not happen. In 2003, the club moved to Milton Keynes and a year later rebranded as Milton Keynes Dons. Cardiff Arms Park, in central Cardiff, is among the world's most famous venues, being the scene of three Welsh Grand Slams in the 1970s and six Five Nations titles in nine years, and was the venue for Wales games in the 1991 Rugby World Cup. The Arms Park has a sporting history dating back to at least the 1850s, when Cardiff Cricket Club relocated to the site. The ground was donated to Cardiff CC in 1867 by the Marquess of Butte. Cardiff Cricket Club shared the ground with Cardiff Rugby Football Club, forming Cardiff Athletic Club between them, until 1966, when the cricket section moved to Sophia Gardens. Cardiff Athletic Club and the Welsh Rugby Union established two stadia on the site, Cardiff RFC played at their stadium at the northern end of the site. And the Wales National Rugby Union team played international matches at the National Stadium, Cardiff Arms Park, which opened in 1970. The National Stadium was replaced by the 74,500 capacity Millennium Stadium in 1999, in time for the 1999 Rugby World Cup, and is home stadium to the Wales national rugby and football teams for international matches. In addition to Wales Six Nations Championship and other international games, the Principality Stadium held four matches in the 2007 Rugby World Cup and six FA Cup finals while Wembley Stadium was being rebuilt. Swalwick Stadium Cardiff Cricket Club was formed in 1819 and Glamorgan County Cricket Club has competed as a first-class county since 1921. Its headquarters and ground is the Swalwick Stadium, Sophia Gardens, since moving from Cardiff Arms Park in 1966. The Sophia Gardens Stadium underwent multi-million pound improvements since being selected to host the first England v Australia test match of the 2009 Ashes series. The 100 franchise team Welsh Fire is also based at the stadium. Cardiff has a long association with boxing, from peerless Jim Driscoll, born in Cardiff in 1880, to more recent, high-profile fights staged in the city. These include the WBC Lennox Lewis vs. Frank Bruno heavyweight championship fight at the Arms Park in 1993, and many of Joe Calzaghe's fights, between 2003 and 2007. Cardiff's professional ice hockey team, the Cardiff Devils, plays in the 3,000-seat Ice Arena Wales in the Cardiff International Sports Village. It plays in the 12-team professional elite ice hockey league. Founded in 1986, it was one of the most successful British teams in the 1990s. Cardiff's only American flag football team is the Hurricanes. It won the British Championship in 2014 after falling short by two points in a quarterfinal to eventual winners, the London Rebels, the previous year. It is based at Roth Recreational Ground. Cardiff International Pool at the International Sports Village, Cardiff Bay The 1958 Commonwealth Games were hosted by Cardiff. These involved 1,130 athletes from 35 national teams competing in 94 events. One of the venues for those games, the Wales Empire Swimming Pool, was demolished in 1998 to make way for the Principality Stadium. The £32 million Cardiff International Pool in Cardiff Bay, opened to the public on January 12, 2008, part of the £1 billion International Sports Village, is the only Olympic standard swimming pool in Wales. When complete, the ISV complex will provide Olympic standard facilities for sports including boxing and fencing, gymnastics, judo, white water events and wrestling as well as a snow dome with real snow for skiing and snowboarding. An arena for public ice skating and ice hockey and an hotel. Some of the sports facilities at the ISV were to be used as training venues for the London 2012 Olympics. A stage of Wales Rally GB, Hosted inside the Principality Stadium The Principality Stadium hosts motorsport events such as the World Rally Championship, as part of Wales. Rally GB. The first indoor special stages of the World Rally Championship were held at the Principality Stadium in September 2005 and have been an annual event since. The British Speedway Grand Prix, one of the World Championship events, is held at the Millennium Stadium. While the track, a temporary, purpose-built, shale oval, is not universally loved, the venue is considered the best of the World Championships 11 rounds. 
The Cardiff International Sports Stadium, opened January 19, 2009, replacing the Cardiff Athletic Stadium, demolished to make way for the Cardiff City Stadium. It has a 4,953 capacity as a multi-sport-slash-special event venue, offering certificated international track and field athletics facilities, including an international standard external throws area. The stadium houses the headquarters of Welsh Athletics, the sports governing body for Wales. The city's indoor track and field athletics sports venue is the National Indoor Athletics Centre, an international athletics and multi-sports centre at the University of Wales Institute, Cardiff Campus, Syncode. Many notable people have hailed from Cardiff, ranging from historical figures such as the 12th century Welsh leader I for Bach to more recent figures such as Roald Dahl. Ken Follett, Griff Rhys-Jones, Katrin Davith, and the former Blue Peter presenter Gethin Jones. The notable actors include Yuan Griffith, Mr. Fantastic and Fantastic Four and its sequel Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, and Ewan Rian. Also notable is Sean Grigg, BAFTA winner and Oscar-nominated Hollywood makeup artist. In particular, the city has been the birthplace of sports stars such as Tanny Gray Thompson and Colin Jackson as well as many Premier League, Football League and international footballers. Such as Craig Bellamy, Gareth Bale, Ryan Giggs, Joe Ledley, and former managers of the Wales national football team Terry Yorath and John Toshak. International rugby league players from Cardiff include Frank Whitcomb, Billy Boston, David Willicombe, and Colin Dixon. International rugby union Jamie Roberts, Jamie Robinson, Nicky Robinson, Reese Patchell, and baseball internationals include George Whitcomb and Ted Peterson. St. Tilo is the patron saint of Cardiff. He was a British Christian monk, bishop, and founder of monasteries and churches. Reputed to be a cousin, friend, and disciple of St. David, he was Bishop of Landaff and founder of the First Church at Landaff Cathedral, where his tomb is. His Saint's Day is 9th of February. Cardiff is also well known for its musicians. Ivor Novello inspired the Ivor Novello Awards. Idolos Owen, founder of the Welsh National Opera, lived in Landaff. Dame Shirley Bassey was born and raised in Cardiff. Charlotte Church is famous as a crossover classical-slash-pop singer. Shaken Stevens was one of the top-selling male artists in the UK during the 1980s. Tiger Tales, a popular glam metal act in the 1980s, also hailed from Cardiff. A number of Cardiff-based bands, such as Catatonia and Super Furry Animals, were popular in the 1990s. Cardiff by the Sea in Encinitas, California was named after Cardiff in Wales. A total of 28 countries have a diplomatic presence in Cardiff. Many of these, such as Germany, Italy, Switzerland, Denmark, Canada, Thailand and the Czech Republic, are represented by honorary consulates. The United States Embassy to the UK operates a satellite office. The following people and military units have received the freedom of the city of Cardiff, they are listed with the date that they received the honor. Cardiff at Wikipedia's sister projects. Thanks for watching.